The Ensemble podcast is intended for professional financial advisors. All discussion is limited to publicly available information and should not be interpreted as legal, professional or financial advice. Ensemble does not hold an AFS license nor provide any financial services. Before making investment decisions, you should obtain financial advice from a qualified financial advisor. G'day, Clayton here from Ensemble. Thanks for joining me for this podcast. It's a pleasure to be able to do this from time to time. Hopefully you enjoy. If you're not already on Ensemble, please go to Ensemble.com or find us in the App Store. This podcast is proudly sponsored by NetWealth. Imagine a world where you can offer clients access to local and international investments. A world where you can engage with clients meaningfully, backed by powerful data and insights with mobile-friendly technology. A world where you can build business efficiencies through scaled managed accounts and bulk reporting. And a world where you can get all the latest news, research and insights to spot the changes that really matter. Wealth is more than just money. It's about opportunity and progress. A world of opportunity awaits you at netwealth.com.au forward slash woo. G'day, Clayton here from Ensemble. Um, Thank you, Peter, for being a guest today. Normally, you're on that side of the microphone, uh, but today you're on the guest side, so thank you so much for coming on. Oh, I'm very excited. You know what? It's a little more relaxing being on this side, I think. I think I I can just chill and, you know, answer questions. It's glorious. A hundred percent. And and, uh, because I I did a a podcast just recently with Ben Nash as well, and he said the exact same thing because uh, there's obviously a pressure when you're the host to and to to deliver an outcome but almost not even be there mm. it's, it's this weird kind of and and i think advisors are strangely well uh positioned to be able to host a podcast just with the nature of the work yeah um but with all that said i think you're exactly right i think uh i think being the guest is is far more enjoyable so um now that you've rubbed that in i'll uh, try to live up to uh <laughs> no my pressure job. <laughs> yeah, the job description. Um, well, so you started how long? How many episodes have we done now with the advice tech podcast? Mm, well, I've recorded twenty four. I think we've right. dropped maybe eighteen or oh, okay, cool, 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 or twenty maybe. Yeah, a- and and when you know when we sort of sat down and and this is the internal ensemble team when we sat down to start leaning more on these TV thematic show concepts as as a as an overarching podcast channel um advice tech or wealth tech um was definitely one of the the top ones that we wanted to implement because it's all about efficiencies and getting mm. the most <laughs> out of technology right and um and considering and i've said this before on this podcast considering you were scaled advice before the word scaled advice existed <laughs> like you were the very first person i was ever aware of that ever went out to um, produce, you know, a, a SOAs at scale, a, a, yeah. a, you know, as many clients as possible. Um, you've had such a, you know, very interesting journey on different technologies. Yeah. I, I was just trying to think back to, if you go back to say 2016, 17, what was the big company that had like a super complicated um pro where everything was mapped out and it did the next thing and it did the next thing i can't quite remember do you so you're not you don't mean so crm or advice yeah. crm so there was sugar so. and so so sugar was the direct competitor to salesforce that was the hot sugar was the hot one because it was open api way back then yes. so that was one. Oh, there was infusion soft was the other Infusionsoft. one yes That's i went to their the conference and everything yes that's what yes. it, so what we they were like a really early yes uh, an early sort of example on how to do all this but i would imagine it would i i remember trying to look at it once and i i think their their manual was the size of a yellow pages or something and i'm yeah. like ah oh, there's clearly no way i'm ever going to use this <laughs> yeah um but it's you know tech in and of itself has come a long way mm-hmm. uh since then and so i'm sort of interested to ask because there's these two concepts, two sort of philosophies, and it's across not just tech, but it's across everything with decentralization and centralization. Mm-hmm. There's always a comp- there's, it, there's always the competitive tension of what's better to use best of breed amongst many different providers, yep. or 
find one provider where everything's intrinsically interconnected and, and makes logical sense from one flow to the next. Yeah. Where do you currently stand on this and has it changed over time? Right. So, oh, you and the listeners are going to hate this answer. Um, it depends. Ah, <laughs> love it. So, <laughs> so, I think some people, and I guess I'm saying business leaders, you know, maybe the owners or the or the practice manager or whatever, I think some of those people naturally respond to what I would call a franchise model. Really, when you're talking, you know, that sort of one thing that does it all, it's it's really like a franchise. It's this is the way you do it. You offer fries on the second order. You like like it's really structured. Yeah. You get this system. You get this product. You get so the franchise model really appeals because to them it's just it's it's all in the hustle. I've just got to get busy, and yeah. the rest has been all chosen for me, right? And so that can really suit people, and they can do gloriously well. Yes. doing that. Not Whereas yet. for others, if you want to design your own experience, because that's really the difference in a franchise, the experience for the client is sort of defined, really. Yeah. Um, if you want to design your own experience, I struggle with anything but best of breed selection because right. your experience might start with a, you know, I don't know, a, co a conference somebody attends and then a yep meeting they go to and then a quiz they do or like it's all those little steps define the systems like yeah, it's no and the I, experience absolutely. you know tells you what you need for the system so i think i struggle if you're doing much you know design ux yep. user yep. experience design in terms of clients i think i think it's a struggle to sort of have the glorious one gorilla <laughs> system yeah because they're yeah. not built for that you yeah. know, um, whereas best of breed is because to you, it might like the most important thing might be that it's super easy for clients to make an appointment. Well, you need the best ever scheduling linked with video ask, linked with whatever, you know, it depends what's, you know, to you, what a user experience means. Yeah. Whereas in a big gorilla, they'll do all the, potentially all those things. Okay. But they're going to not have your passion for the thing in your user experience. That's magical. Very true. And, and just with, with how, our tech has come with, with everything being in the cloud and APIs and do, do you find that these days everything plugs into one another or are you still finding that you have to use things like Zapier? Yeah. So if I exclude advice tech in the purest sense, so sure. tech for advisors, yes. almost like it's 99.99% talks right. to each other or comes right, close. Right, right, right. Right, right, right. The challenge is when one enters into <laughs> tech for our industry, and that's not me judging the tech providers no. at all. This is all no. the nature of the way our industry's evolved. Um, yes. But that that's where you hit huge barriers. Um, yes. And part of it is that horrible word legacy. You know, yeah. you will have product providers that have systems that still require a backslash seven forward slash nine to enter the screen of the whatever. So, you know, people need to understand that still exists. Yes. <laughs> um, but also the tech providers similarly, you know, were responding historically in the last couple, you know, in the since you and I maybe started in this industry, they were responding to large order requests. Absolutely. CBA yeah. financial planning yes. for mm, thousand this. advisors, yeah. we need yeah. this compliance focus. Yes. Yes. What we're demanding now is I want this client experience focus. And those two things yes. are different. They're not necessarily Absolutely. conflicting, but they're different. Yes. Yes. And so, you know, the tech historically has struggled to sort of respond to that. And therefore to them, why would it talk? Why would it talk to something else? You don't need to. We've got what you need here and it's safer if you're within our system and it's, you know, all those sort of things. So, yeah. you know, it, it. I think that's the, it, the minute you walk inside our game then those are the challenges you're sort of dancing with. Um, and that's why, you know, integration, it's something, um, I mean, bless their cotton socks, the guests on the on the podcast, <laughs> the Advice Tech podcast, you know, I'm sure some of them are like, oh, crap, she's going to ask that question because I do with everybody. You know, hey, what are you doing with integration? And you hear somebody who's like, well, of course we integrate and have open API and use Zapier and use whatever, whatever, whatever. And I'm like, woohoo, you know, like to me, <laughs> you've already got the biggest green tick humanly possible on a system <laughs> if that's what you've got. Because then it's just down to my creativity. It's down to how I can use the system. That's right, yeah. You know, it sort of unshackles you significantly. Um, here's a super left field question. Mm. Where do you think 
a combination of uh, relax, re, you know, relaxing on the documentation in, in terms of the QAR combined with programs like ChatGPT. Mm. Where where do you see where do you see that going? Yeah. Okay. So let's cover what I think is the easier one: the regulation. Um, <laughs> so I can see that there certainly will be an intent. Sorry, and even maybe a reality of relaxing regulation. I think the flow through for that into operations will be glacially slow. Oh my Um, God. I just think. Absolutely. Yeah, I just think so many of us, and uh, me included, will be like, but is it really (laughs) changing? I mean, really, really, really? (laughs) You know, (laughs) like I just think we've been slapped around so many times in so many different directions that the the level of hesitancy, you know, I might put the top of my big toe in the water, but that's it, man. You know, so, but in terms, so I think it'll be slow, super slow. And uh, and please, anybody listening, it it ain't going to happen this year in terms of an impact on your business. Like, just yeah. please, please understand this. Please don't wait to do something because you think this is going to happen. You need to operate as if it's not going to happen and then think of it just strategically as almost folding it in. Hey, what if that happened? Awesome. But don't make plans based on this occurring because holy Toledo Batman, it could take forever, you know, yeah. um, which is dangerous, you know, this waiting game. And we've all done waiting games like for for years and years and years, you know. So I think that's part of the challenge. Interestingly, even – so let's imagine however long we go future forward in time, however long that might be, and, oh, it's changed, it's good, we believe it's changed, it's embedded, it's stable. Yes. I'm I'm not actually sure how much difference in reality advice production will be because for me a whole lot of the work and effort and and confirmation and evidence of i would want to have on file anyway so even if it's not what goes to the client you know the the research the 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 evidence and the and the the trail for the next bit of advice so you can look back and go oh gee what did we do then good 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 okay next step is so i think it feels like it's just shifting some of it from in the client's hands to in our hands. I guess it's a sort really of good how- point of it. Yes, and and in terms of the stability of it, there's one word that I want to see that is guaranteed to never come up again, and that is the word look back. Yes. <laughs> uh, uh, the the most frustrating thing ever was when uh, you know the post royal commission and everyone was running around with their heads chopped off, and then it and then you would. The advisors were getting judged by the compliance on rules that didn't exist at particular times. Yeah. And I, that was, I just could not believe that this was happening. And that that's the top of my mind that the number yeah. one thing is, okay, if we adopt something like this in 10 years time, is, it, is, it, is, is someone going to come back and look back Right. When the rules have changed again, yep. oh, they were more lenient back then. Oh, my God. So yeah. I think you're right. I, I think the level of due diligence for, for two reasons, of course, compliance, but um, as you just said, for the user experience, like if I'm delivering advice, why wouldn't I want to keep immaculate Correct. records right. to know where, why advice was delivered like this so that, that there is a better basis of advice moving forward? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that just makes perfect sense anyway. It does. So I think that's where I think, um, interestingly, I mean, there could be this period where things get a bit harder, right? So... So we've all got to do the stuff we've got to do right now. And it feels clunky and awkward, but that's okay. and And we're used to it. If somebody unshackles you from a system you're used to using, and when I say system, I mean an environment. When somebody unshackles you, often people freak out a bit. Like the initial reaction is, um, oh, no. I, whoa. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. so once you can do anything, so what I'm saying is anything in terms of interacting with the client, as opposed to, like we're saying, this sort of evidence-based research, all the analysis, actually it could add work just because it, yeah. it will be starting from scratch. We'll be recreating the wheel. We'll be wondering what we can do. So I actually can see a bit of a dip in productivity before it yep. lifts because we'll all be, oh, should I do video? Should I not? Should I yep. like, you know, and all of that faffing around while in the end, probably a good thing actually could cause a bit of a, a dip, I think, particularly if yeah. you're not already looking at that stuff. So that's the thing I would say is you can be investigating 
great ways to engage with clients now without changing the advice doc process. So yeah. that will get you almost a parallel project that can be happening while all this stuff goes on. So in terms of the artificial intelligence. Oh, yes. We covered right? one half, didn't we? Yeah, so the chat GPT, I'm not sure if you've spent any time using it <laughs> at all. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you say as you, as you so voluntarily funny. respond with disgust. No, 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 no. <laughs> Choking because what a funny, what a funny question. Me, you know, squirrel based tech curious person not having played with chat GPT. That's just so funny. <laughs> <laughs> touché, touché. Uh, where, yeah. do you, where do you see it going? Because, um, you know, internally we've been using the engine behind ChatGPT at Ensemble for about six months. And, yep. and we, we, do, we do it for the purposes that all of the conversation that goes on in the platform, we don't want it just to die off into the ether, but we, yes. we turn it into research, which then we can create content yep. and provide solutions for. So it works really well on our on on our end. Although it's been a little bit clunky to get our heads around, we have, and I'm pretty confident that it's you know the future of the company. And then ChatGPT comes out, and it was all of a sudden it was like Windows 95 to DOS kind of thing. Like it was, right. it, it became this really easy way to engage with it, and a lot of people have started using it. And I think a lot of people have now realized it's like a human in the sense that it it knows what it know it can't invent new things but it knows no. what it knows yeah and it's very good at cross-referencing different data points yes. it's not impossible it's not it's not you know like um perfect, perfect but uh not but it is yeah correct <laughs> yeah and and so uh, do you do you see that you know that there's an opportunity for this to be used in the advice space yeah and i'm, I'm still getting my, my head around what it is but i've sort of i think i in my head i've worked out where it fits in a style or in a tone or in a that sort of thing so you know there's two sort of there's if we use an analogy you know there's advertising is an interesting space it's a creative space but there's a broad range of quality um and if you want to get a better understanding i'd actually encourage everybody to watch the gruen um because they actually analyze ads and the insight into what they think is good or bad how people react what it creates i think advisors can learn a lot a lot from in terms of messaging yeah. and the lesson to me is i think Chat GPT, those sort of things, AI, yep. are like, you know, those ads where it's somebody interviewing somebody who's pretending to be at the chemist. So it's uh, that, the advertorial, <laughs> right? It's advertorial. Yeah, so yeah, it's yeah, meant yeah. to feel really human and real, but it's actually slightly awkward and you can tell it is. So it is replicating human interaction, but just not quite. Yes. Right. Okay. So that to me is where sort of, AI plays in that space. So it does replicate, but there's just a not quite. Whereas to me, then human, like the the thing we can do is the M&M ad, no, you get in the bowl. Like the thing that cracks us up that's become, or, or not happy Jan. Mm. Like these things that become lexicons yeah. in society that nobody would have come up with, but it just resonated in this magical way, right? So I think... That's where I'm sort of sitting in my head. And what I mean by that is, okay, if there's a task or a thing we need to achieve, yes. can I have the almost human version or do I need the magic? Yeah. And so that is where I'm trying to sort of sift in terms of how it might get applied. Yes. You know, so almost human, okay, so that tells me that with processy things or just record keeping or, or digging through records or, yeah, okay, all of that works. And in fact, you'd argue maybe... It'd be better than us, you know. Oh, digging through records, right? All that Absolutely. stuff. So digging through records, yeah. All that stuff, anything repetitive, matching, you know. Look, so whereas actual engagement, so it might. It, so if you've set the scene with engagement, but then it's it's helping with frequently asked questions, maybe. But I feel like we're starting to. I think our bullshit detectors are a bit high, so we sort of go. Yeah, that's a chatbot. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I now they can still form a function when we know that's what they are. And I think that's the other thing I want to I'm getting my head around is is don't present something like the AI as a human. I think that's 100%. a mistake. Yeah. Whereas if you true. know it's a chatbot, it says, Hey, we've got this chatbot function here, you try and answer the questions. I'm like, Oh, cool, thanks. That's really helpful. 
you know, yeah. I might get my answer, you know, done and woohoo. Um, yeah. Whereas if it's pretending to be a human being and then it isn't, you're like, oh, for goodness sake, that's just not, you know. No, a hundred percent. How how we use it with with ensemble, and and I guess this is kind of how I think if we were to start using it in advice, it'd be something similar. Is 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 you know we we put all of this conversation into the artificial intelligence, and then we can query the artificial intelligence as to what the advisors are saying as a collective. So right. So so when you said digging through records, something like hey, it, it, I I I'm thinking that rather than it being a client facing thing because i'm totally with you and and that concept of selling in in the pharmacy i thought was so accurate it's very true so i wouldn't i wouldn't dare let it near a client but in terms of saying to the ai hey here is here is all of the here is here is my client situation here is all the pieces of advice that i've delivered here's all the outcomes that have been received am i missing anything mm. And I think that mm-hmm. after a little bit of time, not now, but I think with a little bit of time, that will be available. So, And there's providers already going down that path. So there? there's people I'm chatting, yeah. So there's in some of the upcoming podcasts, there's people that have already are already working on that almost, well, there's only actually so many permutations of strategies combined mm-hmm. Yes. For clients, because there's only yes. so many things you can do. Yes. And people say, oh, really? But there's hundreds. Yes, but it's only hundreds and computers yes. can deal with a bajillion. So yeah. <laughs> it's it's not actually that many. And so yeah. once you know that, then you can, with a combat, you know, AI and all those smarts, what it's really doing is, oh, when you choose that, it excludes that. When you do this, it excludes it. And it can help you go, yes, but you've not added that. Why? Yeah. You know, like it really can catch exceptions it can you know it's sort of like the most complicated if then else concept yeah um a hundred percent i think for strategy and you know really thoroughly thinking something through it's just yeah. giving really what it's beautiful at is frameworks totally right it's just turning frameworks into something that's easy to interact with instead of a god-awful checklist we've all seen those right yeah. have you considered these 60 strategies oh for good sake yeah. you know <laughs> so so i th- i agree with you i think there's some huge genius that can go on there. I think the other thing is it clearly, I think it clearly will be able to help with content. And what I mean by that is when I write a blog post or, or, or anything really, I always start with bullet point sort of topics or things I want to hit, you know, like some top level things. Um, I then massage it in terms of design like the way to introduce you know the middle the end conclusion and then i peterize it you know so it's it's got all the weirdness of the way i talk and the way i describe and i add in my anecdotes well the first two steps there then things like (laughs) gpt can get you a long way towards so it means right so it gets you you know the first two and then you just peterize it so in terms of being able to get more faster in that sense. I do think there's some real value there. So it means that, you know, you might be thinking maybe you've done a new website and you want to have a whole lot of FAQs on there for your clients. That's like, oh God, this is going to take me all year. You might be able to get it done in a couple of months if you used something like ChatGPT. Do you know what I mean? Like I think you can accelerate output that way. For sure. And and I like to uh, set myself little, little targets. Uh, so for example, I don't know anything about developing and so i said to chat gpt hey i'd like to build a a um a, an internet browser and it said okay download python and i said what's python <laughs> and it said ah, it helps you code and i was like cool how do i do it told me how to install it and then it said now you have to install these libraries I was like, how, how do i do that well you got to go into your command function onto your into your computer and you got to download the um the libraries into your python like this so i'm like great now Let's get this. Um, let's get this thing built, and and it builds. It builds yeah. a, a a working um, um, a browser, which I coded up, knowing nothing about coding. And then I and then I said, hey, I need a back button and a forward button and a search bar. So then we did. So then it included the additional code, and I was able to do that. And then it crashed. Mm-hmm. And then I, I was a little bit lost. So I said, hey, um, it crashed. I went back to and and it said, oh, what was the error code? So I went in and found the error code sent it to them and it said, oh, I can see what the problem is. Fix it like this, right? So that, so, so then, so then I thought, okay, that's kind of cool. Now what I'll do is I'll see if I can use um, AI to build a, a website. And so, and so I jumped onto um, 
yeah, Squarespace, I think it was. <laughs> and I, it just quickly sort of put something together. And then I needed a logo. So I went on to Dali and I, I typed in a couple of different options. And, we, and then I found a really good logo. So then I uploaded that as the logo. And and then for the for the sales text, the copy on the website, that was all chat GPT. So I was able to upload that. And then um, and then I needed like some photographs of you know the, the product. And so I went back to Dali yeah. and I, I was able to create all these uh, photos and and then sort of within about three or four hours, I was able to create, you know, a very pretend business. Yeah. But, but I, it's the, the use cases for this sort of stuff is it's all very early, but it's quite substantial. Yeah, it is. It is. And I think, um, cause people really go, oh, but you know what, is it going to replace us all? And I think, I mean, your example is a really good one to, to think through somebody with expertise and experience in that game may not have had the error code at all because they'd be going, ah, now the thing we need to factor in is whatever. What what it's taking you through is the learner's experience. It's just giving you the steps to do it. Yes. Right? So it's not giving you the expert's super-duper insights because the web isn't full of 200,000 experts on that thing. Totally. Right? Yeah. It's full of all sorts of everything from idiots through to experts. <laughs> right? And so it's sort of almost getting the average, right? So... So that's the thing that's interesting is I think it's it's not going to be the smartest necessarily, but it's probably going to be the average. So that's I okay. Know, We've just got to factor mean. that in, if you know what I mean. So it's it's that's oh, the difference. You mean the highest, the, yeah, the highest quality outcome. Yeah, I correct. It won't be the highest quality outcome. No, but so but that's okay. Of knowledge is very wide. Correct. But it's not always the highest quality. It's yeah. not going to be, and so I think that's the difference. Is people go, oh, but I can get the answer on. You know, and they used to say, oh, I can just get the answer on the web. Well, you can, but yeah. but what you don't have is all the experience of us seeing this over and over and over again. So I, you don't need to make those 12 mistakes I know you're going to make. I can see them. <laughs> right? You're about to do them. Um, oh, there's the big right. pothole. So I think that's the thing is it's still powerful because it's still giving you, like instead of going, I don't even know where to start, it gives you a place to start. That's actually really yes. powerful. Yes. That's a really good way of putting it. Um, now, and, and it, I, I mean, I'm, I'm sure we could both geek out on this for hours, <laughs> but uh, but but I, I'm interested in another line in another line of questioning, and that is, out of what, what you've been doing on the podcast, mm. across, you know, 24 different different products at this stage, anything mm. stand out to you to the extent that you have adopted it? Well, there's. Mm, it, yes, but not because I interview them on the podcast, but it's certainly there's a theme that's come through. So there's a couple of things. There's a couple of things that stand out. One is the most unsexy answer to that, and I really apologize to everybody. This is really – I mean, everybody's like, but Peter, what's the one thing? <laughs> and it is just – we are all using about 30% of every single system we use on a daily basis. We are underutilizing every system we already have. Yeah. <laughs> Every time I talk to, on in those episodes, something like a tool that I've used either historically or currently, and I'm like, oh, really? Oh, I didn't know that. Oh, wow. Like, <laughs> I'm like, okay. So clearly we are not thoroughly using the tools we have. And that's a problem because we jump from one thing we use at 30% to another thing we use at 30% to another. Like, so I've got to say, you know, Yes, we should all be – awareness is important. It's taught me that we've got to be aware of what's out there because it'll help you narrow your thinking. The more you know that's out there, the better you're like, oh, that's for me, which has happened to us, and I'll get onto that. But but we have to try to use the things we have to the fullest extent. A, we're paying for them, yeah. but – I don't think we give them a good enough crack. You know, even Microsoft is an example of that. You know, I and everybody else that's into tech have been talking about Calendly and scheduling tools for years, right? Microsoft have Microsoft bookings. It does all that stuff. It integrates with your Microsoft and Outlook and everything else and it'll talk and there's automation. And I'm like, for goodness sake, you don't need another, as it turns out, you don't need another system. <laughs> if you're on Microsoft, you can just use Microsoft bookings. And it's a perfect example. You know, it's yeah. probably in the suite people are already paying for. Yeah. So well, actually, your your interview with Microsoft put me back onto Microsoft. <laughs> <laughs> I but thought I said the they do all this. <laughs> well, and that's a good example. That comes to my second thing that I reckon is is a thing that comes out is we all have prejudices is too strong a word, but we all have beliefs or or 
was that whether it's you know rose glass colored glasses or not about all these different tools oh that one's crap oh this one's fantastic like we've got these we're conditioned and we're wrong almost yeah. universally we're wrong and so we sort of I'd, I'd suggest to people if you are looking at new things don't discount the one you just think is ridiculous include them in the beauty parade do the digging because they've all gone i mean there's a few that i haven't looked at for a probably a really a good decade Wow. Well, any business is going to have evolved a lot in a decade, particularly in the last one. So I think we all, and we love hero, heroes and villains, you know, like we love, yeah. oh, that one sucks. And that yeah, it, yeah, it's, yeah. it don't do that to your business. Actually yeah. include it, you know, put them through the same process, get them to educate you, see what you can find out because everybody had some great stuff and, you know, you've got to give them the opportunity to let you be able to do that you know yeah. so one of the things we're doing this year um is you know systematically diving into every tool we have and becoming like uber experts go hard wow. relearn retrain re like whatever we're using let's really push the envelope because already you know just little things can make the world of difference yeah. into and to a you know efficiency and, and even just enjoyment <laughs> using the tool absolutely so yeah, so that sort of stood out, and I know neither of those are very. No, it's very interesting, but it's, it's <sighs> extraordinarily important. I mean, I've already done it a handful of times myself. Um, Zoho, for example, mm. is this. It's it, it's a CRM with about fifty apps yeah. attached yeah. to it, right? Yeah. And so these days, whenever we, whenever we say we're going to do something, up, can Zoho do it? Because Zoho could probably do it, probably. Right? And um, so, yeah, it's, it's a lot of stuff like that where you go out and you learn all this stuff and then, but but to you, back to your point, you know, for a while we were using Zoho's mail, but it, 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 because we, we did this huge project of putting everything into Zoho, but it was like, no, it's just not as good as Active Campaign. Right. So we, so, so we do, we chose after learning about it a lot, we chose to use Active Campaign regardless. But I think that's the process. I think if yeah. you'd skipped that step, you may not have chosen an active campaign because you didn't know what you did want or didn't Absolutely. want. or so And so that's what we do too. We sort of do it the hard way or do it with what we've got. And that just educates us better so that then I can narrow it down quickly. I know which one we want. You know, like it really makes that process better. Whereas I think, I mean, I get asked a lot about tech stacks. Well, oh, you know, I'm not going to change it all. And I'm like, <laughs> stop. <laughs> no, 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 no. Like if you implement more than one or two things in a year, Hundred percent. You know, that's you, you're really going to regret it. It will shut you down. You know, it yeah. really pulls everything to a halt. So, yeah. so you know, for us, we have one major tech project this year. Um, there'll be some tweets because it's me, right? So, <laughs> so, so there'll be, hey, try this little thing on the side, that sort of stuff. But in terms yeah. of the core of the business, there's only one, um, and that's actually come up about through the conversations and one of the topics, the hot topic, uh, the black for 2023 in advice tech is client portals, right? And and that's the, yeah. the thing that everybody's talking about. And and I quickly came to, through, to the conclusion, you know, with the assistance of somebody like Fraser Jack as well and talking through cyber, uh, right? Okay, we need beyond email. Like that was just a given. Okay, what's the thing beyond email? Because email itself is not great. Yeah as it turns out, um, from a cyber perspective. But Oh right, from a cybersecurity perspective. Correct. So that was yeah. the that was the trigger, is right, okay, there's these like an SMS, people are getting scammed. Like all of the you know, aside from actually talking to the client where it's face to face on the phone, all these ways we interact with them are under attack. Right. And so yeah. like, okay, well, we've been talking about this with clients, we've been in webinars, we're really trying to educate them on scams and all that sort of stuff and hacking. What do we do about it? And so a client portal um, is an immediate response to that because, you know, I mean, I don't know whether you've thought through that side of things, but, you know, a, um, the email is sort of like doing business in a food court. Like people around you aren't necessarily listening, but they can because they've just got entry into the food court. You, just, you can't stop them coming in and they right. can hang around and they can listen. So email's the same. All they need is your or your e client's email address, right? So, and somebody to click on the wrong thing. So it's like working, like operating in a food court. Uh... It can be okay. But it might not be, you know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Whereas a client portal is the sort of one member club. Like it's it's the knock on the weird door that nobody knows is there. It's the big yeah. bruiser that opens it. You've got to know the secret handshake. When you get in, it's just you and yes. the client. You know, so it's 
it's just sort of really narrowing down or, or narrowing down the risks. You can never exclude them, but it's narrowing them down. So yeah. I had sort of come to that include conclusion in part. But what bothered me is I hate making business decisions out of fear or out of a defensive position. And this felt defensive to me. Do you know what I mean? Like it's like, yes. that's, that's not enough, right? I feel like I wanted more. Um, yeah. And uh, <laughs> so I, was, I was not resistance, the wrong word. But I'm like, you know, I wasn't excited about it. And then, so I, as part of some other work I was doing, did some digging in historically into our tasks. So basically what's the team been working on? You know, we, I looked back. Um, on completed tasks and over half were follow-up client on, like some version of that. Oh, yeah. Right? So some version of nag client to do something, get them, remind them to, you know, that sort of stuff. Yes. And while systems, any systems, Zoho, any of the advice tech systems, all of them can try and have prompts for that. Invariably, it's really a prompt to remind your team to remind the client. (laughs) <laughs> like yeah. very rarely is it actually involving the client in that, if you know what I mean. Yes, yes. Whereas what we've selected is a not just a client portal, an app. And the reason it's an app is because an app on your phone can have notifications. Yeah. So it elevates it beyond emails. So if they haven't sent that thing back, I can have an actual to-do in the system that will pop up a notification that will remind them, oh, you owe Peter that uh, signed whatever. You know, do you think you can get to it? And they can go into the app to sign it. So it's the ultimate convenience and this concept um, called elegant interruption. So it's trying to help people get things done, but do it elegantly. Yeah. (laughs) Make it easy. You know, really. Yeah, guiding light. Um, I I fully get it. It, I think every business, it, it is. Tap on the shoulder, tap on the shoulder, tap right. on the shoulder, tap on the shoulder, yeah. And it's not great for the client. Like, that's irritating. No. So they, they all go, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. But you haven't actually helped them get it done. Totally. So it's sort of, it's taking off that, well, my team have to see the task and then they have to either send an email or whatever, you know, like, so it's taking that out. So that's great. Efficiency win. Woohoo. But also in such a way that the client could act on it on the bus. Yeah they get the notification, oh, crap, I was meant to sign that. Great. Open the app. It'll take them straight to it and they can sign it immediately. Yes. So it's sort of, for us, a client portal or the app is an interaction hub. It's not data feeds. It's not. So all the other things that I was looking at was sort of more about, uh, you know, that where where's your portfolio at? We're all great, all great things. But for me, the thing that's that's dragging us is these administrative things and and drags clients. So, all right, let's find something that just makes mm. that easier. Let's take that pressure off, you know. Um, yeah. And so we're in the finalising um, the beta testing and rolling it out. So that ability to have every document live in a vault in there for the client, and that could be any document they like, really, but yeah. anything in there, having phone calls or video calls happen in the app and record it automatically so that the client can go back. You know, if you've stepped them through some advice and they need to go back and watch that again, you know, so it literally is the virtual hub for your life yeah. with the client. Um, and if they have, you know, maybe they've got a daughter-in-law who's the one that they always loop into stuff because they, you know, they like them to be across it. The app just lets you do, it's just like, that's a, a little unit. And so it's sort of one avenue to that client and they all see it and they can all interact and see each other's interactions, you know, all that sort of stuff. Emails yeah. messy and that stuff. Like emails really crappy because if they don't reply all, then everybody doesn't see it. If they don't, like, ugh. yeah, <laughs> it is. Email does suck. I know exactly what you mean. Um, it's such a it's such a blunt force instrument. It is, and it was never designed for what we use it for now. Yeah, <laughs> you know, it was designed to replace a fax. Yeah, that's what it replaced. Faxes. Yes. Now, like. It- <laughs> Like, now it's just speaking everything. Speaking of blunt force instruments, like <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's it it is yeah. I I remember um like I remember once someone saying that it, your email inbox is everyone else's to do list for your time. Correct. Oh, Correct. It. It's been so hard to shake that description of it. Correct, and and as any individual, that's never going to feel good. No. That's never going to feel finished, accomplished successful, you know, like it's because yeah. it's all about everybody else. So I you see it. So I think, I mean, our team have basically zero internal email anyway. We use Slack. 
We yep. just find that's far more effective. Um, yep. Microsoft Teams. You don't use Teams? Same thing. <laughs> we don't use Microsoft. We're a Google oh, family. Okay. So, good, 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 good. Um, But similar, you know, so it's the equivalent. Um, yeah. But so we don't really have much internal. But I do think even for clients, it's not, you know, they've still, most people, I mean, I know there's a generation that would send an email from their phone, but for lots of people, they'll send it from their desktop at home or, yep. or at the office. Still not convenient. Yeah, still no. not easy. You know, still not able to reply really quickly. So it's sort of blending the best of all of the, you know, SMS is great because you can get cut through, you know, email works. So it's sort of blending all the best of those and then elevating the game a bit. Um, So I'm excited about that, not just for cyber, not just for, (laughs) you know, all the reasons it's going to be great, um, but also to really make it easy for the client and for us. Like, that's just Christmas. I had a I had an advisor reach out to me recently and say, um, you know, in terms of the tech development that we've done, how would I recommend them going about building their own client um, portal? Because they were already using something. And I said, oh, I got some great advice. Do not no. do that. In no and, way. Yeah. <laughs> Under any circumstances, do not build your own client portal. Um, yeah, there's some there's some great great stuff out there. I, are you using something specific for financial planning or is no. that okay no because so because i'm and it's it's about once again our clients our offer how they interact with us then our clients aren't the type that'll be logging in each day to look at the balance so you know that sort of stuff it's not the way we sort of engage with them so those data feeds weren't necessary and now yep. hey I, in a couple of years you know i could be coming back on and going <laughs> well <laughs> Turns out they are. Um, but actually, by then, I'm hoping data feeds won't be such a big deal, so I probably can get them fed into this thing. So what I went searching for was outside of the industry looking for that that client interaction, like who is an expert at doing this um, and an expert across any industry, you know, who can really make anything streamlined, you know, legal, advice overseas, banks. Like I've, So I found a group that do basically – white label apps so they've sort of done all the hard work and then they you know you you pick a name and you do your branding they load it up to the apple apple store and to the equivalent you know for all those other phone types and (laughs) you then you have your own app but really it's theirs with a skin yeah um and so that's where that's where we went they're called moxo um but um but i just because to me it was all of that Workflow automation, you know, and the interaction, the video, the the signing, the like a. And to be fair, there's a, a you know some of the people I've been interviewing on the podcast have elements of that, um, but they're it's not their first focus. And I wanted a an app where that was the first focus. That's what they're going to get humming is the client interaction. Awesome. Well, Peter, thank you so much. I I, I realize you've already recorded the. All of the podcasts for the, I guess you'd call it the first season. I guess. But, yeah. but, but I don't see us slowing down from there. Um, so thank you so much for coming on and sharing with us sort of what you've learned um, over the last couple of months in mm-hmm. working with this. And it's been an absolute pleasure to, to work with you like this as well. So thank you for uh, being part of the Ensemble team. Not at all. And thank you for letting me add all these tech providers. <laughs> There's probably some sort of support group out there for people that had to be interviewed by Peter, I'm sure. <laughs> I'm <Awesome>. loving it. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, thanks again.